And we are live on Underground Wicked Radio, interviewing, and I already forgot how to say it, because I fuck name ups all the time. Choco. Choco? Like I'm going to choke you? Okay, <laughs> now I remember. So, Wait. Choco, where are you from, homie? I was, uh, I was born in Dade County. I'm from Miami. Another one from Miami. Do you live in Florida still? Yeah. Say, say what again? Do you still live in Florida? Yeah, for sure. Still in Florida. Yeah, yeah I got a lot of uh, tune and rate down there. Quite a few artists. You ever heard of St. James? St. James? Yep. Uh, I can't I can't recall it, no. I haven't heard of him. Brimstone Labs? Brimstone? I, I actually heard of Brimstone. He's still around? Yep. Um, He's on my radio. Yeah. He, uh, yeah, he's good people. Yes, he good is. People. When we asked him my red question, dude, I think so far he was the best response on the red question, which we'll ask you at the end of the interview. 606. Oh, Go ahead, homie. First and foremost, I want to apologize because I'm, I'm sick as a motherfucker, so my voice is kind of fucked up. Straight so, up. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. Um, so where did the name Choco, man? Where did, where did that come from? Tell me. Tell me about Choco. Yeah, no problem. I mean, the, the, the whole name is Choco Valleys, you know what I mean? Like, that's that's how I want people to vision it, as I vision it. But, like, as far as, like, how Choco came into play, I was, uh, I was like, with my best friend in Canada and shit, and, like, I had this other name and shit, and he was like, yo, you should just change it to this. And I wasn't really feeling that at the time, man, but... At the end of the day, it made me realize, like, yo, I'm a Latin MC, you know what I'm saying? There's not a lot of Latin MCs out there that are getting the proper recognition that they deserve. So I felt like it was needed to be done due to the fact that, like, there needs to be more Latin MCs out there, you feel me? So the name originated from, though, we took it from this film from this dude uh, named Choco. He was like... He was like, he was like, like, uh, he was like a bounty hunter and shit in L.A. And then like, he fucking died and shit. So like, and like, he, he, the inspiration from that film. I don't know if you guys ever seen the film Domino. Yeah. No. Nope. You have easy. No. Nope. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like, that's that's where like the name came from. Like, we're watching the film. We're like, yo, we should change it to that. And I was just like, word. I mean, fuck it. It's it's killing two birds with one stone. The way I see it, you know what I mean. So, yeah, that's basically where it originated from. That's pretty dope, man. I like the main meaning behind it. For sure, man. Thank you. So, uh, where did you see Choco being in five years? I see myself uh, probably on tour, you know what I mean? Like, probably having a bigger following than I have now, and being more successful than I anticipate, man, and just, uh, I see myself just, just, just really just crushing everybody, because, uh, the momentum that I feel that I'll have between I have now and five years would be unbelievable. Hell uh, yeah. That's, that's the ultimate goal, though. I mean, everybody's goal out there should be to get better and to progress. I mean, if you're not getting better to progress, then you're in the wrong game. <laughs> yeah. Word. So, homie, does your family yeah. completely support the type of music that you're doing on um, your whole career? I mean, uh, yeah, my mother supports it, you feel me? Like, I mean, but it's, it's, it's like, uh... You know, it's it's hard to explain because you know, there's, there's there's a lot of confusion between you know being a full time musician and then working a full time job. And I mean, some people can't comprehend the reality that dreams can manifest if you really have faith in yourself. You feel me? So like, it's it's half and half to be real. You have to these days, man. It's hard to make money on music. It's just insane. If you're not touring, getting away, uh, giving away merchandise while well, selling merchandise, you're not really making nothing these days. Go ahead, six or six. Yeah, I completely agree with that. Um, 
completely, I completely agree with that. I'm in that same boat right now. Like, I'm working a full time job, going to school full time, and still trying to do my music full time. And yeah. It's a grind, though, bro. I mean, it's definitely a grind. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. I mean, I think it's, uh, I think, you know, it's, it's, I mean, there's a lot of underground rappers, you know what I mean? Like, half of them got jobs, you know what I'm saying? There's, I'm pretty sure, like, half of them got jobs. I mean, they, they look, the videos can be quite entertaining from a different perspective, but, like, let's keep it funky. Like, you're not really making money out here unless you're selling merch and you're going on tour. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, you can sell. You can sell albums all day, and you're not making enough to pay your rent and your car payments and shit like that, man. And, like that takes like legitimate show money and legitimate yeah. merch money. But and I'm not talking about a sh one show a week. I'm talking about thirty, forty cities each tour. You know. Word up. Word up. Um. So, why did you become why did you become a rapper, man? What sparked your interest in becoming a uh, hip hop act? Oh shit, man! Oh, it was um, it was mostly uh, just the music I would hear, um, off of my my father's like nights when he would come home and he would just on wine with like beers, and um, he would just play like different types of music, and I heard the Fugees record like one night when I was sleeping. I was like probably six or seven. And then, like, I got, that's, like, what really sparked the interest. I was like, yo, what is this? And I went through his whole album collection, just searching, like, for hours to find that one album. And when I finally found it, I, like, I studied it. And then, like, shortly after, the score, you know what I mean? Then Eminem came out. You know, Pop was still alive around that time. And, uh, you know, and then Dr. Dre, like, in 2001, that's... That's what like really sparked me even more interest when Em and Dre came out, and I was just I was just mind boggled. After that, I was like, "Yo, people are always asking, what do you want to do? What do you do with your life? You want to be a doctor, a lawyer, or or or, 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 or a, a fucking a fucking astronaut or whatever? You know what I'm saying?" And oh, I said, "I, I want to rap. I want to like make this a career." You know what I'm saying? So that's how basically like made me want to do it. Hell yeah! Oh um, yeah! First and foremost, definitely the Fugees are hot, definitely. Lauren Hill is probably one of the most underrated MCs of all time. Yeah, she's very, very uh, revolutionary, man. Like, she's so dope, and I think that she has more insight than a lot of other MCs out there, and I think light needs to be set on that, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, her, her album, her solo album, The Miseducation of Lauren Hill, that's probably one of my top ten of all time. I got to go back. Yeah, uh, she's a great singer as well. She's a dope MC. Well, I think it's time to play one of your songs so everyone out there can see yeah. how well you flow and pretty fast, pretty fast actually. What's that, 606? I'm going to finish this question before I forget what it is. Go for it. Okay. Um, basically, you said you was from Miami, man. Are you, you grew up in Miami? Yeah, man, uh, I grew up in Dade County, and I was living there for from uh, for like 14 years, and then like I moved from from Dade to like Broward, which is still in the same area as Miami, but just like half an hour away, just a different county. And then like, yeah. and then like, um, I started moving around from different parts of the city in Florida because there was so much havoc in my house and shit, but. Every time I would record, every time I perform, it's always in Miami. My reputation lies in Miami. Hey, I'm a big Southern rap person, man, and two of the two of my favorites are from Dave. You got two of them. Word, word. <laughs> Trick William Tree, they definitely put them on for Miami. Yeah, they definitely did. They definitely paved the road, you know what I'm saying? They definitely did oh, that shit. Slip and slide was where it was at back in the day. Yeah, for sure. With the with the shadow oh. bracket and shit, <laughs> that shit was crazy. Yeah, yeah, they killed it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Slip. yeah, yeah. Go ahead and roll with it. We're gonna cut over to a song. 
We okay. are going to play Valentine's Breakthrough 2. Go ahead and tell us about this one, homie. Uh, Breakthrough is a, is a record I put together, you know what I mean, in the, in the span of a couple of months and stuff, doing, like, summer, doing, like, a lot of seasons, and I, I just felt it was, uh, it was something I had to drop, just to let people know, yo, I'm still here, I ain't going nowhere, you feel me? Sure do, homie. We shall be back after the song. Woo woo. By the way, I gotta tell you guys, don't fucking clean in the house with bleach for four hours without opening a window. I can't see a motherfucking thing. My eyes will not stay open, even with eye drops. I feel like I've been fucking stoned all day. But anyways, we'll be back after this. Woo woo. And we're back in Underground Wicked Radio interviewing Choco Valen. Valens. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying up? to look at your name. <laughs> Choco <laughs> Valens, not Choco. Choco Valens. I was saying it wrong, but you know how I am. I'm good at saying names wrong. So. It's all good. It's all good, man. Do you consider your music a career or just a hobby for now? Um, right now I consider it a career. I'm, I'm, I want to keep pushing forward with the gift God gave me and just um, pursue with faith and see what happens. What do you look for when you got an artist that wants to collab with you? Um, do you look at the flow, the beats? What do you look for? Um, I definitely look at everything, man. I look at it from a, a perception like I'm trying to sign him or I'm, I'm trying to like build with him on a different level because I can't just hop on the rap with just any artist nowadays but um if it's someone who approaches me you know what I'm saying and they're like yo I really like your music you know and I want to collab with you and they sound shit I'll still do it you know what I mean Almond Chat Clementine says shout out to Chronic and PBR for making me so awesome you're welcome, homie. I'm not sure who who you're talking about, but you forgot about Underground with the well, radio promoting. He was talking radio. about Chronicles and Weed. He was talking about PBRs and Paps Blue Ribbon. <laughs> I got you. He's over there fucking drinking then. Ah, see that? Easy knows the logo shit. All right, 606, go for it. And as far as Clementine goes, fuck you, Clementine. <laughs> he ain't no and damn uh, grizzly bear. What well, would you say? You you you're an ape, right? No, you said grizzly bear. No, I'm no, but we're going to call you an ape next time. He makes something. Yeah, I'm a vanilla gorilla. I'm the owl gorilla. I'm, yeah, I'm white Kong. So we're waiting for you to make something with him being called vanilla gorilla. I dare you to, Clementine. Okay, easy. Okay. Go ahead. Well, let's see. Oh, hey, hold up, hold up, hold up. Got to do something. <laughs> Guess what, guys? Hold up. Let me get to my stuff. And there's the siren. For those of you that tune in, know what the siren means. Yes, I'm talking over it because I listened to the interview and I know you guys can hear me while I'm playing the siren. It is time for Easy 606 Hot Seat. Go ahead, 606. It's all yours. Oh, shit. This is a hot seat. Choco, you ready for the hot seat? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Big fan. All Big right, fan man. All right, man. Basically, what I do is I ask the artists a couple questions, and uh, it's nothing crazy. It's just opinionated questions just to get to know you a little bit more. Some might not even be music-related, so here we go. Uh, first and foremost, I ask this to every artist. Since there is an over flooding of artists these days, it seems like everybody and their mothers are trying to be rappers. Yes. So, if you were, if I met you out in the club and you were giving away demos and you're trying to get me to listen to you, why should I listen to you? Out of all the other people, why should I listen to Choco? Um, 
fucking with your co-pan is my fans are animals The clan of cannibals is fan will handle you Put hand is man on you, I'll blame and shamble you It's scream and scramble too Another part of this city, saving much without pity Is a smoker for Philly, dump the ashes in your urn A classic will not return, the masses better burn Press the ashes, you'll turn, all these fascists will burn Now who has this concern? A one man brigade with a can grenade Who stand engaged with all of your damn misses But his death kisses, I'm sipping on citrus He just dismisses the devil's wishes he goes off and disses, who get with pisses In the tell off, only you fell off Who I gotta tell off Anybody can get it, no I won't regret it Hell yeah, I said it Where you think you headed, I'ma leave you beheaded See how I did it, this ain't not ready Before you even read it in a newspaper I'm with your cool favor And every cipher, the real cipher I didn't decipher, I of a sniper Y'all sweeter than cider, ain't no one robber Solo a survivor Tight like pliers, a 305 -er. And I would say right after that, that's why you should listen to me. I see a collab oh. with 606 and Choco Valen in that, the future. That was definitely, I give you much props as part of the best answer I've heard to that question. Thank you. Most, art, most artists would not have the balls to do that type of shit. Most artists, you ask them to, to spit a verse or a freestyle and then they're going to choke right up. So, definitely. Mm. Props on that one. Thank you. Thank uh, you very much. Let's see. Oh, man. What are we going to go now? Okay, now we're going to hit a hot topic in the news. So I want you to pick A, A, B, C, or D. Okay. What did I pick a letter? A, B, or C? A, B, C, or D? Uh, D. You say D? Yeah. All right. D is a little bit more of a local topic. I don't know if you heard about this. I know it's made national news, but if you haven't heard of it or don't know anything, just let me know and I'll go to another one. Okay, no problem. Okay. So there's a 12-year-old boy that was killed back last November by the Cleveland Ohio Police. His name was Tamir Rice. The cops had the BB gun? They got a report. Huh? Did he have a BB gun? Yeah. Yeah, I saw that. That's fucked up. Yeah. So, they were report this kid, well, this kid had a BB gun. The police yeah. showed up, drove up to this kid, and just started firing on him and killed him. Like, didn't even, didn't even want to get out of the car. It's like they did a drive-by. <laughs> okay? Yeah. They killed, they killed him, a year went by. Last month, the U.S. grand jury decided that they weren't going to file charges on the cop. Here's what I understand. Um, a man on Twitter had, had made this comment, and it really caught my eye. So, if you listen to the police reports, they never said that it was a child with a BB gun. So, they're thinking that this is an adult with a gun, okay? Yeah. So, in Ohio, it's legal to open carry. So, Was that why you did you do that? Huh? Wait, what, what did you say? It's legal in Ohio? It's legal in Ohio to open carry. So, when the police arrived to the scene, why didn't they try to figure out what was going on before they op before they just pulled up and started opening the fire? Mm. You know I would like to know your opinion on that subject. Do you think that was uncalled for? Do you think that was I definitely that? think that I definitely think that things were taken the wrong way. I there's, saw the video no of that, man. They just fucking the, 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 it was retarded. There's no need for that. You know? there, there is no need for violence towards you know anybody uh, and like. First, there's, there's a different way to address it. You could, you could, you know, really study the situation. And, and, and like, you could tase somebody before you shoot them or something. But exactly. then again, he was just a 12, he's just a 12 year old kid. Like, and this is not the first time this happens. This happened several times. They're at war with us. They want us to die. Is, is, is this not, you know, is it not evident enough? Why? Why is there need to be more murder for this to be in the, you know, the the, the reality that they do want to kill us? 
it's a genocide to me. And unless someone steps up and does something about it, they're going to keep doing it and keep doing it. Why? Because they have the power. And us, we are oppressed by them. There's, there's no way that this will change unless we all fight together. But no, everyone's comfortably numb. You feel me? So it's going to keep happening until the right time happens and it will happen again. And who knows when that time will be, but I know it's going to have to be a war because it's war against us every day. This, and imagine how many more murders we don't even hear, the ones that don't even surface the media. Did you see the one in Chicago that happened a year ago? The kid was walking down on the road with a knife and the fucking cop just pulled up Never said freeze, never said nothing, just started shooting. He shot him nine fucking times, or six times, six times. You know what I'm saying, bro? The kid was on the fucking you ground, he was shooting him. They could have tased you know him. What are you going to do? You let them keep <coughs> I'm pretty sure those tasers reach what, <coughs> four or five feet. Y'all go further from that. They used to be a revolution. And they fucking paid the family off not to say nothing. And the video finally got out and the cop got murdered. No, this is what I'm saying. That there needs to be someone who stands up and fights against people, man. Because these kinds of people, they're not people. These fascist pigs, these capitalist leeches, it's just going to keep killing us. And and then what are you going to do? But just keep reading the shit on the news. Like, there's this... And the more things ain't even... Down here, that I, uh, I want to share myself that one of one of my close friends, he had a a cousin of him died in South Beach over there, and they they tasered the kid to death. You know what I mean? Jesus. And yeah, and it's it's just and there was no justice. There's no justice for the the cop didn't get anything. He should be you know, hung, in my cop, opinion. Every cop walks away free. Yep, they sure do. But, it's alright, every dog has his day. It's fine. We have family. Six or six. So, we're going to keep moving. We got two. I got two more questions for you, then we're going to wrap up the hot seat. So, I know, Brown. What is your What is your favorite project or album that's out right now? Like, not yourself or not like that, but your favorite thing you're listening to right now? Of uh, like radio, like album or like radio on this thing too. Like. Album, yeah. Album. Um, shit. Right now, I just been uh bumping big crit shit. I've been uh his tape. I haven't really bought bought any albums lately, man. Like there hasn't been anything really worth buying that I can uh really uh say. But like I, I'm like I like big crit's uh. It's uh, Better This Way, Mixtape. That shit was really dope. I fucks with that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, li I like I like people from the South more more than anything, but... I got I somebody like, for you to like check to out. Them. When you get a chance to go back on Facebook, check out Clementine. Okay. One of my okay. artists I promote the shit out of and make videos for. It's pretty good. Dope, dope, for sure. All right, so uh, last question. This is called the Beef Block. I'm going to name off four notorious beefs, and I want you to tell me your pick of the two. All right, I got you. All right, Tupac versus B. What you think? Tupac versus B. Oh, what? Who will win the battle? No, but, well, yeah, who, who, who do you think that, who do you think is, like, dope or, like, you know, like... I think, uh... Who came harder? I think, um... I think Pac came harder. I think, uh, Pac I had... I, I, go, I, I go with Tupac because... Pac, like, he had more aggression than he had wordplay. If you really study his albums... He's a lyricist, like, I think he's everything that every MC, you know what I mean, aspires to be in some way. So I definitely go with Pac. I mean, not to take away anything from the people in Brooklyn, I mean, Biggie's, Biggie's the village, you know what I'm saying, but 
And then if you're looking from the aspect, like, who's really trying to, like, do something with his music, I say it was Pac. Yeah, Pac definitely came hard on that, man, because, I mean, Biggie released that Who Shot You, that was dope. But yeah. when Pac released to hit him up and talk about fucking his wife and shit, dude, that just <laughs> that took it to a whole nother level, dude. Yeah, for sure, man. That shit was amazing. But that should have never happened, but that's hip hop, man. All right, let's go with Nas and Jay Z. Oh, man, I will go with uh, I will go with Nas. Ether. Yeah, yeah he definitely Ether. I mean, Nas is still even going strong right now. You know, I mean, no, yeah. Jay Z is lagging right now. How about Eminem and Ja Rule? Yeah, that's not that's not even like. <laughs> It's <laughs> not even worth saying. Like everyone knows, of course. And I mean, John, John's a good artist, though. He's a great artist. Matter of fact, he's a great artist. He needs but to come out like, with something new. Uh, Holes in different area. Co- or wait, no, that's somebody else. Never mind. Forget it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And last one: Meek Mill and Drake. Oh shit! Uh, these these weirdos. <laughs> uh. Yo, I think, uh, I think they both suck. <laughs> I don't even really know. How to, I think they both suck. I don't listen to none of their music. Um, but, yeah, that's how I feel about it. I just really don't know, like, even, I don't, I don't listen to their music, you know what I'm saying? So I don't even know how you can say what characteristics that, that makes them different, you know what I'm saying? I, I think they both suck. I don't know how to judge a man. Like, I was a big Meek Mill fan when he first came out. When he was still underground and dropping mixtapes, he was dope. And then, I don't know, after his first album, he just started dropping down here. Same thing with Drake. Drake's first album was dope. After that, I don't know what happened. Whole dope. I mean, he started learning really more about bitches. What is it? Like, to me, the whole McNeil thing, like, and then when Cassidy, like, I think Cassidy destroyed him, like, I was like, there was no, nothing left of me after Cassidy destroyed him, so, I stopped okay. listening to, like, to all the noise around me after Cassidy did what he did to him. Cassidy is a known battle rapper, I mean, that dude, that's yeah. not one guy that you want to expect to. Yeah, definitely a dope MC. <laughs> Alright, uh, Snickers, we, we, want, we concluded the hot seat. We're going to cut over to a song. Let me see what I just pulled over. If my fucking eyes would open up. Uh, I for an eye. Tell us about this one, homie. Yeah, there's a record I did uh, a couple years back. I did it in Canada and shit. It's just uh, something I felt like needed to be dropped at the time. And um, me and my homeboy got her. We put it together, and uh, it came out great, man. So yeah, I just I just hope more people download it. You know what I mean? It's a uh, it's definitely a great record. We're back after this. Woo woo. No problem. And we are live on Underground Wicked Radio, interviewing Choco Valen. Now up, you up, guys up? are just tuning in. You missed the hot seat. You suck. Watch for the interview. It's going to be up on JuggaloNews.net. I need to get off my ass and finish the commercial that 606 did for them. I want to add in, in uh, a couple things, then throw it in rotation. Um, To find my lounge, we have a lounge, too, where you can chat with us. The music plays there. Go to JuggaloNews.net. Scroll down a little bit. Click on the flyer of Underground Wicked Radio. Get in chat. Join us. Under that. Any more questions? Six oh six. Oh, hey, guess what? I gotta go over to where the hell is it? Yeah, I can't see. Fuck it. I can't play the sound for it on this interview. Six oh six. It's time for the red question. Hell yeah! Hell yeah! 
So, the world wants to know, Choco, so, do you have the Red Wings? What? <laughs> do you have your Red Wings? Wait, say that one more time? Your Red Wings. Do you have your Red Wings? My red, my red wings. Yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about, bro? <laughs> He's like, wait, wait, what? Easy, you Did explain you? it, homie. Go for it. Whoa, oh, me. Oh, who, 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 who do I inspire? No, 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 no. no. Oh, do you have your red wings. Like eating a girl out on her period. Do you have your red wings? No. No, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> no, bro. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no. Why not? No. <laughs> what, what, what about giving it to a girl on her period? That's another type of red wings. No. But it's no. silky. It's really silky. You should try it out. No, man. It's, it's just, you know, I don't want the blood all over the, you know, the sword. You know, it's just, it's just not right, man. That's where you, you know, hop in the blood. shower. You do it there. I heard that that does work, though. I heard that does stop the bleed. It does, actually. It really does. <laughs> that was a good one. Do you know who Dilemma is? The rapper? Tech Nine's friend? Um, what's his name? Dilemma. He's on My World with Tech Nine, and he's Brother Lynch Hong's brand new artist. He picked him up. He just picked him up recently? Yeah. I haven't, I haven't heard of him. I mean, there's a lot of dudes Tech Nine. We're actually pretty good friends with Brother Lynch Hong's manager and Dilemma's manager. And oh, wait, wait, you said, you said, you said Brother Lynch? Yeah, Brother Lynch. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I heard Brother Lynch. He's, he's been around for a while. He's been around for a while. Yep, so is Dilemma since 98. Tech 9 gave Dilemma oh. his uh, name, actually. But yeah, Dilemma, I, I, I never heard of. So, so I remember you, you hit me up on Facebook and you asked me if I knew him. But, like, Definitely nah, I didn't check know him out. Him. Definitely. Um, we asked him the red question, and he pretty much had the same reaction you did, except for he thought it was a gang question. So his manager is hitting me up. He's like, dude, you got to cut that out of the interview. We can't have gang questions. And then I'm like, um, hey, world, why don't you go ask your old lady what your red wings are? Dude, he comes back laughing. He's like, holy shit. <laughs> it was good. So it is time for shout outs. But before we do the shout outs, why don't you... Do a radio job for us saying this is Choco Valid. You're listening to DJ Snickers and Easy 606 on Underground Wicked Radio. And then drop uh, some links for people to find you on Facebook or SoundCloud or Reverb. Go for it, homie. It's all yours. All right, I'm done. Oh, yeah, listen, you're now tuned in to DJ Snickers and Easy 606 at Underground Wicked Radio. Drop right, some links. Wanna... Oh, yeah, I just wanted to shout out, uh, shout out Brooks O, Yoko Gold, Souls Couture, Tory Lanez, and, uh, Zero, Mayo Stunner, and, uh, yo, follow me at Twitter at Choco Valens, my SoundCloud, Choco Valens, download my music, it's free, go enjoy yourself, listen to my music, boom bat, motherfuckers. <laughs> Spell your name out for him, homie, and I'll put that in the drop, too. Uh, which one? Uh, spell your name out. Say, find me on SoundCloud. I'm Choco Valen. And okay. then spell Follow it. Me Some on... people okay, are dipsticks. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, because <laughs> for people who can't uh, spell my name, it's C-H-O-C-O, -C -O, Choco, last name Valens, V-A-L-E-N-S. Perfect. So wow. you can Google me as well. Google it, motherfuckers. You heard that. Like EZ606 <laughs> says on a drop, Google me. <coughs> so, any more questions from you, 606, before I ask the last two? 
No, man, I'm good. And uh, shout out to El Chapo. I, I see El Chapo got caught today. Shout out awesome. to El Chapo. Yeah, it was like that. That motherfucker be back. He'll he be out in about another month. What happened? They caught El Chapo in Mexico. Did they really? He was in fucking Mexico? Yeah, uh, he runs he that country. What would he do there? Holy shit. I didn't hear about yeah, that yet. No. I'll have to check that so out later. Be so, last two questions. Choco yes. Valens, did you enjoy your interview on Underground Wicked Radio? And would you come back? Definitely. It was definitely fun. Definitely dope, man. It's good to hear. I like to hear when the artists say they had fun. I don't like doing boring interviews. I mean, I'm not like, this is, how did you get yeah. You know what I mean? I can't do it. No, this show, man. This show was fun, man. This show was dope as, dope as fuck, man. Stay tuned for the interview. If you got a friend that wants to hear this, it will be up on Juggalo News. It may take a couple days. I mean, sometimes I get the videos over to them and they take their time getting them up. But, no everyone have a good night. Well, no, it'll have a good night. Tune back in in an hour and a minute. We are interviewing Oogie Boogie. Stay tuned for it. Whoop, whoop. <laughs>